I've never really d um, dived? Dove? I don't remember. I haven't looked too much at this. Huh. So this is the main line, eh? This is the one that all, at least the people in this database have played. This looks sharp. Also, perhaps I need to work on localization for these names here. Maybe. Uh, some proprietary database that I don't own and can't really tell you anything about other than it's copyrighted. So it's not free to distribute or anything, but somehow it's available. But yeah, I don't know, like, studying openings is probably not the road to Shodan. Um, probably the road to Shodan is do lots and lots and lots of Suma. Alright, no time pressure. We got a silver. Let me zoom this in a little bit more. All right, so I'm I'm counting like uh, my knight cards the square. This is oh that's a dragon okay. And this is a horse nice. So my thought was knight here promotes, and then something takes it, and then I drop the silver here, mate. There's several problems with what I was thinking. One, moving the knight up to this square does not promote it. Two, the silver drop uh, would still not be checkmate. So, yeah. Hmm. Oops. You thought Bioyomi was fun. Man, 30 second Bioyomi has caused you a lot of trauma. Yeah, you could actually try, uh, change the sound setting. You could listen to Chime instead of uh, the counter, the person. Because, um, yeah, that can be stressful. Uh, or as once we referred to it on stream as Chime. And I immediately thought, well, that's going to be Chime-san. <laughs> the beep boop counter um but yeah is there a solution to this one really i'm struggling with it uh if i could get the horse to move what good is that oh okay yeah so the answer check horse takes and now nothing can defend along this diagonal to protect the king, so... Correct. Yay, we got one. <sighs> okay, I think I've seen this one before. The rook moves somewhere. I guess... no? Not on the first move, but you're trying to set up a rook move that's going to be devastating. Maybe it is the rook on the first move. That seems kind of weird, though. Um, I don't understand it. So if I knight check on either square, the king goes to 9-4. No, 9-6. 
Um, no, one six. That's how you number these things. There's no numbers on the edges. And that's fine, because when you're playing on a real board, there aren't numbers on the board. It's useful for analysis, but not for actual gameplay. Yeah, I don't know. There's got to be an answer, and moving the knight really doesn't seem to be it. Well, wait a second. Yeah, no, moving the knight actually works, which is crazy. Because now you just defend the knight. The knight protects this square behind the king, so yeah, the bishop can just take whatever blocks on that square. There's no promotion involved. Okay, this, lots of pieces. Exactly, yes. Well done. See, you don't need a ton of pieces to checkmate, although some of these problems seem kind of contrived. Um, so... Yeah, first shut off. Okay. Well, that was survival mode. Apparently we get three strikes instead of one. And I'm, like, super impatient because I want to get back to coding, believe it or not. Um... See, we're going to find a way to get through these problems one way or the other. Actually, are we? <laughs> I'm growing increasingly impatient. All right. Um, that's a check. Okay, whatever. Wait, that's not a pawn, is it? Okay, whatever. I don't care. I care about the first one I failed because I'm curious about it. Um, the other ones I don't have a strong opinion about. Wait, was I right? I picked this check, but this one should be equally good. Okay. Didn't think that was any good. It couldn't possibly be that. Why does that work? Oh! If the king advances, then the horse is mate. Okay. That's really clever. I've never seen this before. But yeah, I'm working on some quality of life issues. Um, like right now, if you were to drop a bishop, um, I'm sorry, the, the pieces on your piece stand. Here you have a bishop. This bishop should really be in the most prominent section of the piece stand right up front here. You're not wanting to hide this from your opponent or from yourself or behind the chat window. Okay, it's only slightly obscured, occluded by the chat window. Um, yeah. So I have a fix to move this to the top of the piece stand into a really prominent position. Well, actually, the top right, because the top left would be a rook or two rooks. So, yep. Um, yeah, I was working on coding this stuff to make it better, easier to use, whatever. So the less fun aspect of coding this uh, is that we've got to manage the deploy pipeline. Um, so last time I deployed code to GitHub, we got some build errors. Um, Create schema. Okay, yeah, that's where I thought we were failing.
Yeah, they were talking about it. Somebody put an issue into this issue tracker that's tracking 24 issues right now. And I'm like, hey, I'll take a look. Either this is going to be really easy or really difficult. And it was easy. So I fixed it. And it's just a matter of making sure that gets tested properly before they deploy it. But I'm pretty sure I fixed it right. notification is this oh ah now this is an interesting point by Fauci that in really slow games um, this particular patch works better than fast games. Hmm. Write a form of it which gradually increases the bonus. Um, based upon how safe the queen is, instead of conditionally, yeah. So, not to put too fine a point on it, but yeah, that's a patch. Uh, this, it's funny, like the Stockfish pipeline, people have been submitting patches to add a bonus and remove a bonus for very specific situations. Um, and I'm in the camp that do not put bonuses into the Stockfish code unless like this is some sort of gradual 0%, 10%, 20%, 30%, etc. bonus where it's not an all or nothing bonus based on like the position of a piece with respect to the position of other pieces. Give incremental bonuses the same way that a neural network might. So, it's a thought. Um Okay, so do, do, do. using a password on the command line can be insecure. Can't connect to local MySQL server run through. Oh, oh, duh. I'm an idiot. Um, I mean, we already knew that, but still. No, I now realize one of the reasons, if not the only reason, um, why this is failing. So, installing the latest MySQL, that's great, wonderful. However, um, this installation is running in a container, so you can't really connect to a container over a socket. 
like through var, etc. Um, you need to connect using whatever the formulation of a URL is for MySQL. Uh, so, man, MySQL. Uh, what's usage? MySQL options DB name. Shell, MySQL user password. Um, double dash help. All right. Give me help. That's not helpful. Or is it? <laughs> help, help, auto rehash, no auto rehash, vertical bash, bind, bind, addresses, IP address to bind to. Sure, I guess. Can I get like a, instead of an IP address, can I bind to localhost? Hey, how do I connect this to the localhost machine name on the standard port? Protocol, TCP, socket, pipe, memory. Um, all right, my SQL connect without socket yeah here we go use an IP binding to this just use protocol see Jonathan's answer all right um, protocol TCP all right um, so let's take a look at this. Okay, let's give that another shot. Wait, are pieces not showing up on the puzzles piece stand on purpose? Um, I'm not sure if we're referring to the same thing when you're referring to pieces not showing up. Oh, on the puzzles piece stand. Okay, that's how I can parse the sentence in a way that makes sense. Um, yeah, so you're asking why the opponent um, doesn't have anything. No, there's an issue about that. I don't know if it, it's intentional or not, but there's an issue to change that so that all the pieces appear here. Um, but I'd like to get all this other stuff working first, if I can. Lost connection. At reading initial communication packet. Okay. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> Unknown option username. Oh. Wow. Okay, so that's interesting. 
So I can connect over TCP to my local box without giving the IP address. Um, unfortunately, this really isn't telling me what's it take for this particular method of installing the database to... Hmm, hmm, And I really don't want to go back to using MySQL 5 when I could be using MySQL 8. I feel like most people aren't going to be using MySQL 5. Eight open issues in this repository. How to start my sequel. I eventually switched to Travis, yeah. Okay, now this is a fair point, that I could try the same Docker container on my machine. Uh, the same thought occurred to me this morning. Um... Okay, I am sensing that this plugin is not supported at all. No, there's somebody who tried to assist. Um, okay, so somebody did get this <laughs> page not found. Yeah, this tool is not supported despite being pretty new. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I'm having the same reading initial configure, uh, communication packet error. So, I've gone from having one of these errors to having a different one of these errors. And I'm not sure exactly what's up. Bump this, bump this. <laughs> Add support for MariaDB. Uh, I might start trying to use MariaDB. Not gonna lie.
Oh, with MySQL 8 changed its default authentication plugin from native password to caching SHA-2 password, causing this server... Okay. Uh, wow. Tests fail. Promises PR. Try to reach your secret database password. It does not have access. Yeah, this guy put in a ton of work. How did he do it? All right, well, actions here are failing. That's really unfortunate. Um, All right, I think my resolution is going to be I have to use MySQL 5.7 and just pray things work. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get rid of install MySQL and shut down the MySQL, etc. Um, which also means I have to create the Play Shogi user and the Play Shogi database, etc. Uh, actually, if, well, yeah, creating the Play Shogi user is probably a good thing to do. Um, so it's going to go somewhere in either create schema or initialize database. Um, Wait, I closed the browser tab, which contained the little documentation I needed. So where's the thing about root? Okay, the super password root is generally root, so fine. And this could uh, in theory, connect over a local connection. All right, that's as good as we're going to get, I think. Um, and then one of these SQL files uh, needs to, oh, drop user if exists, play shogi, create user, play shogi, etc. Okay, good. Um, nice. See, I don't need to worry about going out of my way to do that. Um, And the only problem is that this MySQL database that comes with the GitHub uh, Ubuntu instance by default is a really, really old version of um, MySQL. So the dialect for setting things up might be different. Uh, okay, this also can't connect. Um, so, uh, let's see. Install my SQL server and JDBC driver. All right. Um, so that my SQL server. And push that. 
and we'll see exactly what version of MySQL is installed, if any. Actually, we won't see because I don't know how to introspect this damn container. Oh, you can't see my terminal, because I'm not showing my terminal. You're missing out all, on all my exciting coding. Um, okay. So, yeah, that didn't do shit. Um... This is, that's not even the steps that are in the file. Did I forget to add the file? I think I forgot to add this file. All right, this should work better. Yeah, tests tend to work better when you actually test your changes as opposed to just submitting a test randomly with who knows what in it. My SQL servers already the latest. Yeah. That's what I thought. So, yeah, it was unnecessary for me to try to install MySQL Server because it's pre installed. Um, and since it's pre installed, we're going to first configure that before we install the JDBC driver. But also, like, Apparently none of this matters because um, we can't connect to the database. Also, I'm curious, maybe I should try MariaDB instead of MySQL. Really, I shouldn't be using either of these. Um, but I don't think the schema, as I've currently exported it, is compatible with other... Okay, wow. Yeah, that's where we put this first before we have any external things to download. Cannot connect to MySQL server on localhost. Um, so yeah, whatever GitHub is doing um, is preventing that. GitHub actions cannot connect to MySQL. All right, what's the resolution? I, white on white on white is great. After several attempts I did that, no idea what else I can do. Disable bind address, bind address, etc. Hey, here's a couple of samples for running SQL. Um, hope you find this useful. The fuck is this? Oh, you define your variables up in it in advance and then call your command at the end of this. Wow. Um sure, why not? We're already screwed. Let's just can't get any worse. Um it's a pity this didn't format correctly, but can fix that. Oh, jobs. 
test host runs on etc. MySQL. What's the formatting of that's even supposed to be like? I'm confused. That's not like GitHub format. Can you check this? If you want to specify both the IP address and port explicitly, that should override the behavior. Uh, found the issue. MySQL return a random port. Um, the one I should be using. So this is the port I should connect to to get the random port number. Okay. Good to know. Um, okay, that expression is going to be the port number, apparently. Apparently GitHub likes to give services random port numbers. Wait on what yeah, what could possibly come of that? No, I think it's just like my dark user style for GitHub conflicts with something else here. Alright, so this the reason my patch didn't show up here is because something about it's invalid. Uh, and is instead gonna show up um, in my actions as I did something wrong. You have an error in your local syntax. I copied this from somebody else, so like, no I don't have an error. Um, you have an error. Okay, I mean, what could I have possibly erred on? I guess this is the syntax to use. Double braces on each side, and this has like a default value in there. So. I don't know anything about what I'm doing anymore. Um, maybe you could just use the MySQL that comes with the platform. For example, my database, you root h this, p root dash e, it's what? How the fuck does that work? Am I not doing something sufficiently similar to that? A dash e for expression? That shouldn't matter. Okay, well, at least this way I don't need to specify the port number. Um, Oh, I 
think the error was caused by git automatically wrapping the line. Um, you note that like somehow that got split into two lines as if I were writing an essay. Anyway, um, yeah, that should be fine. Also, that's not going to work, but we'll give it a try. What other stuff does this ship with? It doesn't matter, because the schema I'm creating is a MySQL schema. So... Needs to work with MySQL. Or I need to regenerate the schema to be compatible with some other thing. Okay, what's broken now? I think what's broken now is that I'm in the wrong project. Yeah, 38 seconds ago this failed. What was the error message? Okay, yeah, I thought so. Uh, host equals host name. All right. There was a typo, but it wasn't in this step, it was in the next step. Whatever. Uh, so this isn't going to work, but let's pretend it will work. Alright, look in the chat. Nothing in chat. Marketplace actions. Anything about is SQL a category? SQL is not itself a category. I have to search for SQL. Azure SQL deploy, reform SQL files, set up SQL package, grant permission, SQLite DB. Oh, yeah, SQLite. My SQL to SQLite 3 converter. Nice. Oh, yeah. Maybe I should use SQLite 3. <laughs> is this kept up to date? It has zero open issues and one pull request. That's concerning on both fronts. Unless this is extremely active, but zero stars seems to indicate that it's not super active. Uh, zero closed. Add test job to master. So yeah, this has not seen very much use. Wait. Can I just do this conversion offline? Transfers all data from MySQL database to a SQLite 3 database. Nice. Yeah, let's do that. I'm sick of this. Now is this data only? Or can this do schema? Uh, without foreign keys. Nice. So like this can transfer schema. Got Python 2.7 installed here. Um, 
um, Alias pip equals pip three. <laughs> Pipe three. Nice. Well done. And Python, I really mean Python three. The one of these folders here contains all that Python stuff that just got installed. Wait, user lib. Yeah, I'm not even installing into user lib right now. Where did all this other crap go? Oh. Yes, okay, downloaded all these files and then failed to install them. That's okay. fine. Now, alias pip equals pip3, alias python equals python3, pip version. Nice. That'll work. Um... So that said, let's try this again. And this is probably going to give me a better informative message that, hey, you can't install that. Yeah. Um, okay, script tabulate is installed in dot local slash bin. Okay, so dot local bin uh, SQL that help. Nice. Okay, I've never used this before. Oh, wow, wow, that's inspiring. You want to convert your data? Oh, use this online converter. <laughs> that is so secure. Why didn't I think about that? <laughs> oh my goodness. That's so annoying. What the fuck? Can we come up with more complicated ways to do things? I could see, like, there's not a lot of motivation to support this. But also, you'd think some deeply passionate enthusiast would have found a way to get it done. Alright. Yeah. Pearl! There we go. Mission accomplished. I don't need... There's no way this Perl script works. <laughs> it's too short. Um, what? It's a Python script. I'm making it community wiki. SQLite3.dump and then 
Python dump for my SQL. Okay, here's the script. This might work. Doubtful, but maybe. All right, whatever. If you are using Python Django, it's pretty easy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, we gotta start using Django now. What the fuck? Okay. Uh... IntelliJ Data Grip? Not a terrible idea. Wow, that is crazy. Like, IntelliJ might have motivation to do this. Or data grip might, whatever. But yeah, I could see that somebody who works on developing development tools could be interested in this thing that otherwise is pretty esoteric. Um... Yeah, I just want to convert the damn schema. I can take care of the data myself. But also, I don't see how easily to use this. It hasn't been updated since 2011. Uh... Hmm. So there's a whole suite of tools that do this, and this is the only web page that has any information about those tools. Uh, what is going on? I don't trust any of this. This is great. <laughs> um. A DOS Fox Pro program to transfer DBF into SQLite table. It's cute. Firebird PostgreSQL to SQLite 3. Oh my god. That sounds like a nightmare. I am so confused. Yeah, so this is a commercial product that does the thing and might or might not work. Whereas this is probably also a commercial product but integrates with an IDE. Free 30 day trial. No thanks. Yeah, I could see, like, this is such an esoteric use case of, I'm too lazy to convert my schema, go do it for me. Um, and do it between this kind of database and this other kind of database. Um, yeah, I could see, like, why... Uh, what's this? Let's see, what more is there to review here? So, I think what I'm realizing is I either have to take one of these things that's offered on Stack Overflow and just try it, um, or um, give up on it and just manually convert the tables.
Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Although I'm concerned with doing it the other direction. But yes. Something like that makes sense. The, the data is not the hard part. The hard part's getting the schema moved. Since I don't know SQLite 3 that well. <laughs> Def line. This line is useless line. Okay, that's funny. Um. Well, I am desperate, so we'll try it. Oh, right. Uh, get this into Python of whatever dump for my SQL that pi print line. Oh, <laughs> this is Python two code. All right, uh, what Python? Which Python? Let's user bin Python. User bin Python version. Yeah, okay. So I'm at to use user bin Python. Okay. So yeah, oh, well the contents of that have been completely overwritten. Because apparently I was reading a file while also writing to it. Um, let's try that. All right. So there are some differences, but not many. Um, but I think this is also going the wrong direction, isn't it? Yeah, this is going to my SQL, not from my SQL. That's too bad. if I type this in yeah command not found it's the last time this five years ago no February 14th 2020 nice so when we dump two we convert the dump um, okay do I even have SQLite 3 installed Wait, how do I escape? How do I exit this thing? Two, three, nine, seven, six, eight, foreground. All right, there we go. Um, Yeah, 
let's clone this tool. Um, all right, usage is MySQL to SQLite, MySQL to SQLite, um, schema.sql. Nice. And then we could import that into SQLite 3 if we so chose. Uh, <laughs> if we so choose, but maybe we don't. Um, so I'm trying to think of what's the best way to get this up in the cloud. and get SQLite 3 installed on one of these boxes and do a development with that instead. Um, oh, but the database driver is not going to work with this because it's a MariaDB database driver. Uh, so yeah, I am just thwarted every step of the way because I'm not thinking forward enough. Um, so I think the only, no, it would be rather disappointing. Um, to give up on any sort of testing that involved a database at all. But maybe that's necessary. Because all this database stuff, well, the the thing I moved was supposed to test authentication. So, like, that's not testable with MySQL. That is the conclusion that I arrive at. Um, so, yeah, we're not going to create a schema. We're not going to initialize the database. Uh, we could install the database driver. It's not going to matter. Um, because we're never going to use it, but we have it if we need it. Um, yeah, we'll just have to wait until GitHub catches up and uses a version of MySQL that's accessible. Um, or I have to switch to Travis, like that other dude did. So yeah. So for tests to pass, bearing in mind that what we added was an authentication test, we're now going to comment it out. <laughs> Play Shogi library database source test, whatever is in here. Yeah, that one. Um, Yeah, we're just going to ignore it. Um, ignore database authentication test which is not um, unsupported by github yeah um, wait so we added I mean, we added the schema.sql and the setup.sql with no way to test them. But um, now those are the scripts that were used. Uh,
Right, so that's actually in both. And wait, create user, identified that. Alter them, identified with this. Okay, so that might not be necessary anymore. Um, hmm. I mean, yeah, we're going to keep that anyway, are we? I don't know. It's good enough. So this is the schema for play shogi. Yeah, I think all that's necessary. So git push, we're going to just declare success with a test that's completely ignored, which I'm super annoyed about, but nothing can really be done about it. I think the word is shogunai. Okay, well, what I just committed is still no good somehow. It's failing for a different reason now, and it's failing in this queue. No artifacts were generated. Step can I have both the uses and run keys? All right, so I messed something up. Oh, hang on. Okay, what did I, how did I mess this up? I didn't even preserve the history, so I can't look at the previous version super easily. Although, really, any previous version would suffice for comparison purposes. So, uh, show me this file. Okay, it's not showing me the older version of the file. Great. Um, name, create schema, etc. Name, cache maven packages. Uh, check out v2. Check out v2 should be up there somewhere. Steps uses this. And then somewhere we've got uh, Maria. Oh, install JDBC driver. So I accidentally removed this. Come on. We need a new website. Let's go. Let's celebrate our passing test, please. We have one test that's passing. Okay. Finally, we get to compiling our code, etc. And this time, tests will be executed, except for the one that we just told the build system to ignore. <sighs> Good gravy. That was extremely painful. Um, but yeah, it's good to see tests get executed except for the database thing. All right, 
yeah, and then we build the website. It could be cool if this would actually deploy the website. <laughs> that would be super um, exciting and dangerous. Well, I don't know. All right, nice. We have a success, which means I'm finally going to go to this pull request that I marked as a draft forever ago. Um, how do I unmark as draft? Oh, OK, I guess that's the button to unmark it as a draft. JUnit4 is easier to use, and apparently my SQL and uh, apparently GitHub uh, doesn't have a way to test. Uh, apparently, GitHub, uh, apparently, my SQL is not GitHub. Actions compatible for uh, uh, apparently the GitHub hosted MySQL, GitHub default MySQL, or other versions do not work well in GitHub Actions. Uh, for example, attempting to create a database. So it is necessary to disable um, the database authentication test. However, other tests work and can uh, other J unit four tests can be seen working in the pipeline. And then I could link to the pipeline over here, this thing. All right, well, move existing tests, uh, enable JUnit for tests, except the MySQL uh, database connection. go. Mission accomplished. So with both of those in place, finally I know that once I start writing JUnit4 tests, those tests can be run up in the cloud. So that means that for these other issues in the backlog, um, if I can write a test, then uh, I can also write code that fixes the test. If I can't write a test, um, fixing the test is going to be harder. Or getting the test to pass, rather. The test itself can work, but um, yeah, it'd be good to get, let's see, pieces in hand order. 
yeah, we got a fix for that. We have a patch for that. Um, go to pieces in hand can spill onto the board. Yeah. Yeah, this is unfortunate and funny. Um, but mostly unfortunate. Oh, I know what I want to look at next. So I made some changes um, that affect the layout of the screen. So get repository branches. Let's see. Centerpiece order. Yeah, let's wait. No, push is not it. I just want to check out the branch. Am I not? Maybe I've already checked out. How do I know what branch I've checked out? Where can I find that? I mean, I could just run this and see, like, if it... Well, no, this is the layout that I changed, and here's the... Yeah, that's the most recent change I made. So I am on the branch that I was trying to check out. Silly me. All right. Um, so, yeah, to test this, uh, we can go over to dev mode here. Can initiate dev mode and see what happens. Um, because, yeah, the one thing I'd forgotten to check was what do two very large pieces look ne next to each other on the stand? So, if one player somehow got both rooks and both bishops in hand, how would that look? Oops, that's my piece. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Take that, take that. So now we have some pieces in here. Oh. Oh, this is not pretty. Um, I messed up. I messed up. So, uh, yeah, now if Gota puts their pieces in front of my mighty pawn. Yeah, these pieces are too close to each other. I only want to do that special three quarters thing just for pawns. So, let's fix that. Um, so how do I know if the piece num, uh, this otherwise square width, um, piece typed at ordinal. Oh, hang on. I don't really care about the ordinal of the piece type. I care about the piece type of the piece type. So, yeah. If um, piece dot get piece type is equal to this dot pawn, Now, is there, like, I mean, we never get promoted pawns in hand. What are all the piece types? Okay, the piece types are, um, doesn't matter whether they're Santa or Grota. Hmm. 
pardon me. Let's try running that again. Git commit file. Do I mean survival openings? Oh, this is extremely smooth feedback. It's nice. Wait, am I just imagining things? Or do I have the same problem? How could I possibly have the same problem? Also, what's this error? Okay, whatever. I don't care about the small pointer. I care that these pieces are much too close to each other still. Um, yeah, like, what the heck? I couldn't have managed to get this completely backwards, could I? Whoops. <laughs> I forgot golds have a harder time taking. Okay, yeah. So these are exactly as close as these are. Um. That's super annoying. I must have forgotten to do something. All right, um, whoops, not this, life cycle, package, build me a new thing, compile my new code, please, okay, um, war, war exploded, just, yeah, really compile everything just to be certain that everything compiled. And then initiate dev mode again. Okay, compiling. Do, 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 do. Um, that's better. So yeah, my change for pawns is now only going to affect pawns. Which, that's nice. Um, Okay, here we go. Let's take a picture of that. Uh, yeah, these aren't falling off the piece stand or anything. Um, crop. Okay. Let's see, let's pause this. Team git, git, commit file. Um, fix uh, only force uh, fit up to five pawns on the piece stand. Four of other. Oh, wait. Uh, actually, somehow, 
My stupid math worked. Um, yeah, if my plan... Oh yeah, that's good enough. If, if I zoom in on this... Yeah, this is noticeable. This is not ideal. I'd like that moved ever so slightly to the left. So let's do that. Um, coma die inside margin. Oh, that's. <laughs> oh, no. That's being applied uh, to the height, not to the width. It's like, yeah, this top margin of five makes sense. This left margin, I have no idea where it's coming from. Oh my god, that's funny and sad. What? How? I'm confused. Um, okay. What if I just subtract two pixels and say, you know, I just feel like, I really feel like I want to subtract those two pixels and can't explain why. Does that look any better under, well, under the most extreme of scrutiny? I mean, honestly, this looks decent. But also, like, this is slightly falling off the stand. Uh, how far is this gap on the left? So we've zoomed in 500%. I am at pixel 5 here. See, so yeah, 2 pixels is about right to move the... Wow. Alright, launch default browser. Openings. Oop. On the bright side, we're getting closer to finding an opening that just takes all of Gota's pieces. <laughs> um, but yeah, we actually need them in hand. Um, oh. That thing I just did is also going to affect the layout of the pawns, unless I make it not affect the pawns. How do the pawns look on the stand? Pawns look beautiful. They don't need to move left. They could, but they don't need to. But then they're not going to be aligned with the... Well, they're not already not aligned with the other pieces. Alright, so this is version A. Um, let's just take a few pawns and see how it looks. Number two. Yeah, it looks slightly better up there. Down here, that's not as great. I don't know that I actually like this any better, though. Like, this is starting to fall off the left side of the piece stand. Yeah, that actually has me a bit nervous. Um, so the other thing we could do... is just reduce this margin by one pixel per piece. Um, so yeah, our padding calculation is going to be that or this minus one. Um, all right. Let's rerun our targets. Uh, 
pile, build the war exploded, etc. Sure. Uh, let's try this a third time. If this is going to be a service people use, let's try to make it look good. How many browser tabs do I have open? Too many. All right, openings. Santa's piece stand, I've got to do something like that. Alright, how's this look? Hey, Cormac. We're fixing a bug that I just discovered while looking over my most recent changes. There we go. Hey, that is art. That is art. We fixed the bug. Now this, the corner of this here is 175. Um, let's see, if I do some more editing of this, just in paint, our piece stand actually ends there. So now if we look, we have one cursor width on the right. We have, eh, it's roughly a cursor width on the left. It just feels like this is ever so slightly too far to the right. Uh, uh, but yeah, this starts at pixel 7. Yeah, this is somewhere around 6 or 7. And here we have pixel 165 through... 171. Eh, that's actually symmetric, isn't it? This center point here is at 172. No, it's at 87. And the width of this piece stand is 172. Yeah, 172 divided by 2, 86. No, so I was right. This is one pixel too far to the right. Um, <laughs> uh, does it look okay? Yeah, no, this still looks weird. We're going to fix the one damn pixel. This is so crazy. Um, wow. We have gone boldly into where we don't need to go. Um, int margin equals ASDF. Um, left. Uh, left margin is going to be equal to zero, except if your piece type is a pawn. Um, actually, <laughs> yeah, we're going to move the pawn's left one, uh, where x is equal to this plus that. And then if I want to refactor, rename. There we go. Mirror play, training bot to jail. This looks like no overhang. I mean, we're talking about people who are crazy enough to be spending their lives doing shogi problems. So, I mean, 
We're already kind of committed. <laughs> um, up to five pawns on the piece stand. All right, so I actually should verify this, even though it's totally going to work. Um, let's, man, We've got too many paint windows open. That was an attempt. That was an attempt. This was an attempt. And this is what I get for looking at things too closely. Um, rebuild. Okay, rerun this. Like, I do appreciate how quickly this builds and lets me start testing. That's the other thing. I still have tabs open from last test. Openings! Check out this cool new Shogi opening. It's called... <laughs> Well, I need to give it a name, but, um, it's the double static rook. It's the passive aggressive static rook. <laughs> all right. And then to get all these pieces into one player's piece stand, we have to go out of our way. Um, then they drop a piece and then drop another piece, and we take it, and they drop this, we take it, and they drop this, or they move that, we take it, and now we go and see if we like this or not. Arguably, the issue might have just been the piece stand was in the wrong location, or there could be something off about the stand itself. Um, Crop zoom. So this is what the top of the piece stand looks like. This is what the bottom of the piece stand looks like. Good enough for government work. <laughs> it's not really government work, but yeah. Somebody complained that you could. Um, well, Gota's piece stand has issues. If you have more than five pawns. We could try to fix that and just say, if you have more than five pawns, you really don't. We're not going to show you them. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That seems like a problem for another day. Um, fit up to five pawns on the piece stand. Well, no, they were actually overflowing onto the board, which is a problem. So... Uh, let's see. If this, do we have a count of the number of pieces? <laughs> and ASDF return. Um, wait, 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 wait. This is what this thing's for number of pieces that could be shown on the stand without overlapping. Um, so if this return, we're just not going to show pieces that exceed that number. Um, Supposed to return a point. Um, yeah, I don't know.
Oh. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, okay, I'm not going to try to address this other issue, because there's other problems to figure out here. Fit up to five pawns on the piece stand. And center... Uh, center pieces. Align pieces. Yeah. Sure. Uh, commit and push. Come on. I thought it was... Like, I saw some animation down here and just kept animating. And after about a second or two of that, continuing to animate. Um, Alright, we're gonna take this. Actually, we're gonna crop this damn thing. Uh, this piece stand. Crop. Now we have this nice, beautiful image. What do we do with this beautiful image? Um, looks good to me. Bam. Mission accomplished. If somebody wants to improve on that, it's open source. They can fix it. Now, like, what this is not doing is the thing that 81 Dojo does, which is really clever. Um, I guess we'll take a brief digression and look at 81 Dojo. Okay, first, please nobody challenge me to game while we're doing this. Alright, second. Study room. Hopefully nobody walks in, because this is going to look funny. Um, so, 81 Dojo does something clever with the uh, piece layout. Okay, I take a pawn, you take a pawn. So watch like how the pawns um, aggregate on the stand. Get five pawns, five pawns, um, six pawns, seven pawns. Wait, don't they start? No, they just stick all them in the same line? Okay. I thought they did something more clever than this with their layout of the pawns, but evidently not. Um, how many pawns can I take? Well, I can't drop a pawn right now. Uh, Wow. Okay, I thought they did something clever where the pawns actually curled up. They used to do that. This changed. This used to like make a little smiley face or something, and now it doesn't do that anymore. I should report the bug to Hidechi. See how much he'd appreciate me reporting, hey, you changed the layout of the pawns on the peace stand. It's not a bug. I'm pretty sure it's not a bug. Um, oh, right. I want to have... Anyway. Interesting. They used to make all kinds of weird shapes on the peace stand. So, yeah. We had our little fun looking at that. Um, so... Looks good to me. I think this is the way you want pieces to lay out on a piece stand. Now, it's going to take until like the weekend or something for this to be reviewed. And that's fine. But, yeah, seeing this on people's streams and seeing it look like... Um, here's the production site. Or here's the... 
uh, deployed play shogi. So if you're looking at pieces that are in Senta's hand, this is the way they look. So you can see this is kind of different, eh? So that's what I was fixing, is how things lay out. Also, now I can accommodate up to five pawns. The remaining pawns still overflow. Like, it's still kind of funny. But just don't get five pawns in hand, okay? The limit used to be four. Now the limit's five. If there are really problems with that limit, we'll find a way. But, um, oops. Yeah, let's go back one. Let's let him keep taking the pawns. So, like, this is what it looks like. pretty funny. Just don't get that many pawns in hand, okay? Because I don't feel like fixing that right now. I tried, and it's not easy, so yeah. Just don't get that many pawns. Oh! Oh, wow. was writing <laughs> about all the stuff her puppy wrecked in the last 12 hours. Man. That, that's uh, unfortunate. Wow. But yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, I was just saying, like, this is the way the peace stand used to look. Um, and I think I've made it better, and it's not perfect, but just don't get more than five pawns in hand. I don't even know, like, how using the opening explorer, or how doing Byoyomi survival, you'd even have that many pawns in hand. But, yeah, if you had that many, um, just stop doing that. <laughs> It's pretty funny, though, watching them overflow onto the board, but I can't think of any opening where one player gets this many pawns. Like, potentially I could just give all the pawns right in hand here. That'd be funny. Um, uh, let's see. So, yeah, what else is there? Go to pieces in hand can spill onto the board. And there was somebody else pointing out that um, need to resolve number 31 first. Depends upon this being resolved first. I don't think uh, and um, that looks difficult to fix. All right. Oh, when you play with double arrows, weird things happen. For example, at the end of the Suma, you can still move your piece. Plus, it's your opponent's move, so why would you be able to move anyway? Also, yeah, moving makes it wrong. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen this. I think I've accidentally done this. Wait, that's my local instance. Hey, look, I got arrows. <laughs> I don't even know what I did to do that, but that's pretty funny. Problems. Oh! Yeah, something's foobard. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, I stopped the server. So this is the client experience that doesn't have a server. Yeah, let's use the actual server. So, yeah, if you use the arrows to skip. Oh, that was weird. Huh. Perhaps this has been fixed. Yeah, so if you use the arrows to move or to skip, then if I skip to the end, yeah, at this point, um, I don't know why, but um, yeah, that seems to be fixed. I do not see how to reproduce it anymore. Uh, all right, cool. That's another issue. Um, Summa categories doesn't work when you go skip or next. Yeah, so you could get like a random difficulty problem uh, by hitting the skip next button which I think is exciting like what greater way to accidentally find a challenge um, see if I say I want to filter by three moves okay right, this is a three move thing I assume this does not look like a three move problem but also, I don't have more than three move problems locally, so I don't care. If I can't duplicate it, let's just keep that for later. Um, yeah, enable solving by problem number. I could work on that. It'd be better if you could log in first. Uh, but I can't get the login test working. Damn. Um, and hashing passwords and all that looks like a lot of work. Pawn drop mate. Need to add a legal move condition to check for pawn drop mate. Um... All right, so how in the world do I orchestrate a pawn drop mate in the opening? Okay, first of all, oh, this does allow me to enter illegal moves. Well, that's funny. All right, um, yeah, I don't know how to reproduce the issue then. If pawn drop mate's illegal, um, why do we need to add a condition for it if there aren't any positions where that's a problem? No, there are some positions where that's a problem. I just might not have them. Okay, well, since I don't have the test position, I don't feel like recreating the data right now. Uh, we'll put that off until later. Multiple answer problem. All right, so 715 has multiple solutions. Um, hmm. Wrong. Oh, right, I can step, step, step. We're saying rook drop from far away is also correct. Is it? Oh, wow. Okay. Is 715 in my <laughs> database? 
Oh god. This is awful. Troubleshooting things that I can't reproduce is just painful. Um, I feel like this is especially bad because, like, we do some legal move checking in various parts of the program. Um, yeah, this looks difficult to test. Well, at least I can't exercise the UI for it. Because I don't think I have problem 715. And it might be a pain to create that. So, what more can I do here? Um, I guess we need to figure out uh, where this comes from. It says wrong. Find in path. Wrong. Okay. From safe constant. <sighs> Wrong HTML. Find references usages. It's not used. Whatever. We'll do the remaining troubleshooting this from either GitHub or a command line or something. Um, it would be nice to exercise this locally to observe the problem in action. Um, Yoyomi Feedback Panel. It's a great name. I'm sure it was a good name at one point, but um, names get dated. Naming things is hard. All right, event is success. All right, so the next user finished problem event is the real thing I'm searching for. All right, and that has the problem controller which generates the user finished problem event. And so this leads to is position checkmate. Um, so then we need to look at the definition of is position checkmate. And it's probably just is this the move that's in the database. Um, Shogi rules engine test. Wait, we have a test for this. Okay. Huh. What? So. Yeah, that's confusing. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is what it is. Like. Eventually, somebody will enjoy it. I think Telmarch put quite a bit of effort into putting this site together. Um, both in terms of, like, getting the problems. Like, that's a crazy amount of data. And uh, uploading and opening this database. Like, he's either generating that somehow or putting himself at risk to make this happen. So, um... Yeah, the quality of the data is pretty good. And I don't think people are progressing all that quickly anyway. I think that's what I'm more concerned about. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, Tom March, like this is Jean Jean Fortin, is putting in tons of work. To make this site and what I'm trying to do is like apply my skill because I actually have some software development skill um, and work on some of the rough edges of this thing but 
Honestly, I think you've put in way more effort than I have at this point. Um, but yeah, I'm confused how... Well, I can't duplicate this locally. So... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what to say. Find in path, control shift F. So yeah, this is used in a few places. Well, most of them are in this test class, but it's also used on on move blade. Jump to source. All right, yeah, an on move played existing move, main move. What if not is existing move? New variation. Huh? How does this make sense? Oh. Oh, well that's confusing, isn't it? Um, if this is a new variation, trigger a new variation plate event. Uh, not necessary. So, if I were writing code, and I'm trying to think about this logically, I would start with, are we solving a problem? and then else do something else and if we are solving a problem then check is this checkmate um, it's a drop move position checkmate is equal to false <laughs> if it's a pawn okay yeah i know the point taken uh, that actually answers one of my other questions. That is funny. Yeah, I guess you can't tell just looking at a position whether the previous move was a pawn drop or not, so you have to explicitly say that pawn drops are not checkmate here. That's... I never thought about that. So, yeah, this results in a new variation plate event up here. See, so, yeah, I was going to largely repeat everything that's in here. Um, so let's not do that. Instead, um, yeah, this is a hack. It really is. This is where we need to say, like, congratulations, you win, sort of thing, instead of new variation played. Um, or maybe we don't need to do anything. What was I hoping to find? Uh, so I found somewhere that there was game code, or there was code somewhere that said wrong. Uh, is this where we search for wrong? No. User finished problem event. All right, and this happens in the problem controller. Um, wait, what? On new variation. Oh, so this is handled already. 
but it's not. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that also takes my other... Yeah, being able to reproduce things locally makes it easier to solve issues. But yeah, here we have a new variation plate event. And on the new variation, if the position's checkmate, um, then yeah, the player found an alternative checkmate. Um, so why the bug? Well, I don't have the data to figure this one out, so not my problem until somebody gives me data. Or maybe uh, in lieu of having data, I can wait and it'll probably be a week or something, but wait until this J unit stuff is known to be working. And once we trust J unit, um, then write some test for this and try to figure out why it's not working. Um, that's, I guess, the plan. Because, yeah, it definitely looks like um, there was an attempt to fix the problem. And this attempt occurred 18 days ago. Finding an alternative checkmate. And so, yeah, because I can't run this code locally, I can't know which of the two situations we're in. But yeah, after this fires the new variation event, we get a fire position changed. It's possible the position... Ch well, that shouldn't affect anything, right? Uh, what do I know? What do I know? Position changed event is handled here. If it's triggered by the user, openings. Wait, what? Openings activity. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's different. So somehow they attempted to fix this, and the fix does not work. At least the message that displays to the user indicates that they failed. So, maybe this fix just hasn't been deployed yet. Uh, the only way I would know is if I were to make the data that we're in this problem. I cannot reproduce this issue without the problem Kifu. Which I'm not going to bother making. Somebody gives me the problem Kifu, I'll fix it. Um, so, let's see. Oh yeah, this would be a nice quality of life thing. Especially after you play the next move in a new problem. Now that's a good point. Whoops. I clicked the... Yeah, thumbs up. Alright. Um. Okay, let me check. You're not filing a git. You're asking when I get around to it. You want western pieces as a 5k... Yeah! Yeah. Some of these rules that must make you laugh that you caught a bug. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do enjoy outside. Sounds pleasant.
So fire position changed. There's all kinds of events that fire. On move played, on game tree changed, activate. Um, game navigator. Okay, let's go back here. Shogi files, source, control shift. Yeah. Uh, wrong message panel. Choose editing key. F what? Editing key foo. So the only things we can show are wrong and correct. Apparently it's not possible to show anything other than wrong or correct. What about when I first bring up the page? Problems. Play the correct move. This is what it should always say in my opinion when we look at a problem. What? Oh. Okay, is this only in Biyomi Survival that we see this? Yeah, this wrong display is just not helpful. Yeah, just we're gonna scrap it. I don't like it at all. If somebody wants to add it back, they can find a way to do it better. Okay, problems. Okay. I just removed that from the Kifu editor panel. Alt Shift Enter deletes. The, no. Safely delete. Yep. Okay, let's check again. Wrong HTML. Oh, hang on. Super annoying. We're going to figure this out. So something dismisses the choose HTML. Oh. Um. What is this line break for?
so user finished problem oh hang on so yeah I don't have a way of knowing what mode we're in if we're in Biyomi survival oh wait Yoyomi survival finished event. Okay, but. Uh, user problem finished. Yeah, this doesn't tell me whether the current problem. Uh, so, yeah. I had great ideas about how to make this better. Um. Are there other event types? User finished problem event. User navigated back event. Biomi survival finished event. Like, what are all these events? Um, client events. Position changed. It's triggered by user. What the fuck does that mean? User finished problem event. So these events don't really inform very much. Like, there needs to be a way of knowing when the user finished a problem, are they moving on to another problem? That'd be kind of nice. Uh, find usages. Yeah, I should take a look at this. Update move timer. Um, user finished problem event. Okay, what controller are we landed? Bioyomi activity. Oh. Oh, okay, this is actually complicated. Yeah. Okay. Now I understand why things are the way they are. Coding's not easy. That said, we really didn't need the correct versus wrong display. At least in uh, any of the endurance modes. It's debatably only useful when you're in that one mode where you get to select a problem and you stay on the problem after failure. Um, stop, etc. So yeah, the I keep forgetting like the continuous activity mode um, is not the first mode that was developed in the site. Um, Activity. Wow. Okay. 
goodness, that's exciting. Yeah, you're supporting a lot of stuff on this, with this code base. Load Suma. <laughs> yeah, there could be like a Load Suma event, really. Um, if number of moves is zero, request random Suma. Otherwise, request one with the number of moves. Wait. Maybe this is the cause of that weird bug. Start and skipped. Load Suma with null. Um, yeah. Jump to source. All right. User skipped problem event. Um, Whereas over here, we get to load one based on an ID. Where the hell did the ID come from? Equals place dot summa. Okay, well, I can't follow this. This is too much. Oh my goodness. This is all too much for me to understand. Yeah, I think players will just live with it. Unless there's some hack that could be put into the UI to check whether um, they're in some sort of endurance mode. Let's see. Yeah, this is just way too complex code, as I assumed some of it might be. Okay, well, yeah, we had high hopes and dreams. Um, I don't know what the problem ID is specified for. Is there a reason that's specified? I think for scoring purposes it's supplied, but hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Also, user finished problem is not as descriptive as user succeeded or failed or something like that. Um. I feared that some of this code might be in this kind of state. And this sort of thing is what drives a developer to tears um, and causes development to slow down. I took some of the low hanging fruit and greatly improved the quality of life of these things, but yeah, this is actually kind of challenging. Um, Load next problem. Wait. Problem service, get random problem. Okay, but this somehow knows what the number of moves is. I'm so confused. There's like multiple ways to load the next problem, and one of them. It's called load next problem and it's private. And the other one somehow loads a problem with the next button. Um, 
yeah, let's see if I can trace this code again. Used. Okay, Bioyomi activity has this load next problem, which is defined in Bioyomi activity. However, this is not the only way to load a next problem. Um, There's also SUMA activity, which attempts to load a next problem, but the way it does that is sometimes requesting it, request random SUMA with a number of moves, or just request a completely random SUMA. All right, well, first, before we start making any code changes, let's check out the correct branch. Um, Okay. Second, um, I know you're saying that we're going to allow uh, getting a random problem without specifying the number of moves. Well, what happens if I just say, no, that's just categorically forbidden? That to get in the next problem, you have to specify a number of moves. Um, Other compilation errors have I just introduced? Now, I was just searching for. Yeah, uh, apparently I was able to effect a change to a file um, without even opening the file, which is nice. That is so nice. Um, But this somehow didn't actually cause other compilation errors, which is a problem. Um, I mean, it's fine that this file doesn't have any errors, but if I close all the files, the project should still have errors somewhere. Um... I feel stupid. View options. No, I want to see problems not for the current file. I'd like to see all errors all the time.
Okay, I guess another way to view problems would be to attempt to build this project with stuff missing. So weird. Oh, a nice fire and two happy dogs in the yard. Very good. Uh, it's all working. Just started with the new Linux laptop. Oh, cool. I didn't know like Linux was popular on laptops, or at least that's uh, interesting. It would not have been my first choice, even though I am a huge open source advocate. Uh, I like my games, but I really don't do much gaming on a laptop anyway. Okay, so this is not as easily searchable as, say, GitHub is. Um, well, that blows the hole in my theory. I have to spell it problems service. Um, fine. 11 commit results. Am I even in the right repo? No. That's so weird. Yeah, no, there is a problems service in somewhere in here. Um, oh wait, so I was able to look at get the problem service definition. And this defined multiple versions of get random problem. Um, all right, problems service impl. Okay, let me search for get random problem. Because this should take me everywhere that I'm interested in. So. Get random problem here. Yeah, this didn't compile because I deleted definition for that. All right. Um, then let's continue. Get random problem is accessed by a lot of things. Uh, no moves, no moves, no moves. Um, okay. Problem or request callback with null. Expected two arguments, but found one argument. Well, that's not the problem I expected us to encounter. How about this one? Get random problem. Get this callback. I'm so confused. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's not. You built it for your wife. She was mad at Windows being slow, and not working. So you defragged it and built her a Linux laptop. And once you got everything working, she loved it. Then bought a new one, since I was getting a new one. Burnt out my motherboard, crunching, ooh, wow. Um, <laughs> sounds like a getter SSD problem. <laughs> or a new laptop, yeah. Hard to stick an SSD in a laptop, yeah. It 
it's mm, I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing if you're talking about tape but I what do I know I don't really do much with that Let's see this request random suma right so I got rid of the <laughs> oh okay yeah I got rid of the version of this that accepts just the callback all right so this is starting to percolate up the stack and point out all the places where we need to specify a number of moves um, so if the sum ID is null etc then we need to request a problem based on num moves and hopefully num moves is defined but we don't actually know but I mean how badly can we do right um, so yeah this load suma well, I'm sorry how many other compile errors are there in my project I don't even know what project am I in I am in the GWT project still. I haven't moved outside of it yet, apparently. Um, so, yeah, we've got this. Load suma is the method. And it's consumed by suma activity, which accepts the suma ID. That's well, also consumed by um, the skipped etc problem event um, so uh, this is okay and this is consumed by what yeah apparently users never skip problems that's what I'm hearing <laughs> uh, that can't be right So there's a user skip problem event, which is a pretty generic event, but it's used when doing suma. Oh, right, we were just here. Uh, shit. So I was hoping to figure out, like, somehow from this scope, can we somehow know? what number of moves is equal to. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, load suma is now going to require um, num moves. Um, so for this to work, well, do a problems indicate? Yeah, good. And do we have other consumers of this? Now, the funniest thing about this is I won't know whether it works or not because all my data are three move sumo. But I couldn't have made it any worse unless, like, it completely breaks. So, uh, let's see. New drive would have to be external. Ah. Hang on. I have an idea. Uh, let's see. Macintosh. No, floppy. Actually, these didn't have floppy drives, did they? Um. Yeah, just like hook one of these things up to it. There we go. Perfect. Like, either of these sorts of things would be great. <laughs> Just stick that on the side of the laptop. <laughs> Just plug it in. You know, we have external storage. <laughs> uh, man, it's been a while since I've seen one of those. I miss the noises. They made great noises. Uh, it's colorful. 
You know, I wonder if you could get one of these things and, like, on the top of it, make that into a shogi bond somehow, and just, like, you have the 9 by 9 lattice. And you have, like, little magnetic shogi pieces you just affix to the top of it, and you can play shogi on top of your disk drive. That's thinking outside the box. Uh, yeah, you could almost build a PC inside that thing. You really could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but hey external storage you don't have to worry about opening up the device yeah that got me thinking about it is just how enormous these drives were they're so good uh, yeah I just try to think of some practical use for it these days that would be so funny. To find a use for it, that is. Not to, like... Hmm. Wait. Okay, see, I was looking at this. Oh, alternatively, I could stick into here the number of moves of the problem that the player skipped. If somehow I distrusted this variable. Um... I probably do distrust all global variables ever. Uh, so these are the only two places that use that value right. Oh, nice. There are value rights. So, and it is, oh, right, of course. Nice. So I don't know whether it would be a quality of life thing or not to actually do a value right on a problem load. Um, who knows? But yeah, this is at least decent. Aside from the fact that I have no way to test it, but it's not going to be my responsibility to test it. I just have to write it. Testing is somebody else's job. All right, so yeah, let's. We've checked out master. Get. Uh, where do I go? Repo branches, new branch. I need a name. I need a name. Wrong problem, sir. Um, okay, I got a notification. Please, for the love of God, merge this thing. Really? Okay. If we're playing by those rules, then let's look at this. Oh, yeah, no, actually, this did get tested quite a few times. No, not directly, though. Um. Hmm. Interesting. I disagree. Could we just please merge this thing? not argue about whether or not it's better to do just like it passed the tests the code sucked it was a good idea but just in practice um just imagine if every chess position you had to figure out has my queen infiltrated it's not going to make a difference most of the time grandmasters never think about this whatever um yes yeah, so Anyway, back to shogi cat coding. Um, um, this is a terrible name. I need a better name. 
You have to go unfollow chess. You're talking about the Twitch category, right? Yeah, I did that a long time ago. The noise to signal ratio is just too bad. Um, next, soon the same category. No. Yeah, next, Sume. Uh, difficulty. Yeah, there we go. Uh, next Suma level. Now, category is the word for it. Yeah. Nice. Oh, it turns out that it's the channel, not the category. Yeah, naming stuff is extremely hard, especially if you don't write tests and you're not accustomed to writing tests. And you just never improve at naming. Uh, it's hard. Git, commit file. Okay, what have I edited? I mean, I suppose I could test some of this stuff, right? So all my edits were inside the website. Uh, so you could build the website. Make sure it still builds. Uh, success seems to indicate that it built. And we could run it. And since all my problems are mate in three, we're not going to get the most meaningful test here. But, yeah, we could give it a shot. All right. Test one, problems. OK. That's cool. Uh... Yeah, maybe I do need to fix that. Hang on. Oh, right. This is what happens when I try to connect to the database on my machine. Or on my Windows box. Somehow that connection is still not working. So let's connect to the database on the other box and retest. Uh, to do that, we have to rebuild this lifecycle. I mean, this should have taken care of itself already, but in case it didn't. Build success. Play Shogi website. Should just, well, Fine, we'll rebuild this as well. Plugins, war, build, run. Launch. Okay, problems. We got trouble in River City. Capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. All right, this is not good. Could not ra load a random problem of zero moves. Okay, that's fair. We need to pick a difficulty. Next. Also, probably the default value should not be zero, because that will always fail. 
so let's stop. And the default's now going to be three. Okay, so we got that. Let's assume the activity, so that's going to require me to rebuild this. dev mode again. And launch the AM site. Okay, problems. Oops, I picked three by default. The radio button for all is selected. we not have anything work today? Whatever. Okay, the default's going back to zero. I don't care. If somebody wants to file and fix a bug for that, that's fine. Um, although, honestly, it looks fine. I was just being persnickety about it. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. Sorry, the light green and dark green names uh, blended into each other on my display here. Uh, I now realize that I have an audience of more than one person while I get pissed at this program. <laughs> Very politely. But um, let's see. Random problem zero is not ideal. I mean, maybe I could figure out how the site is formed. Um, why not? Let's give it a try. So search for all. On click, activate. Problem options panel. Radio button all. Set value true. Yeah, that's not it. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. For I in moves. Vertical panel add button. All right, well. Let's see. Button dot set, what's it? Value equal to i equals num moves. Um, and set this equal to uh, num moves equal to zero. There we go. And the only problem is that this now requires an additional parameter over here. So, some of you. All right. Oh, you're telling me this view is constructed before the number of moves is selected? Like, where is this consumed from? Suma view is it's injected. Okay, fine, whatever. Nothing's ever easy. Nothing's ever easy. Okay, fine. We're just gonna hard code a three there. And people are going to look at this code and wonder, what is 3? 
why is this significant? Uh, how about make it the first element in the list? There we go. Problem solved. And then that moves thing comes from somewhere else. Um, so this problem options panel is consumed by, or I'm sorry, find usages, show me, yeah, here's where we were earlier. This moves is the data that supports the view is embedded directly into the view. A plus. How could that possibly go wrong? All right. Hey, look, I deleted that. Um, moves. Equal. Yep, yeah, here we are. Oh, it's the same damn thing. Hmm. Doesn't need to be there either. Really should be defined somewhere more globally. I mean, yeah, the UI does configure a lot. Um, all right, we're going to search back up num moves is equal to zero is declared here. Suma act, oh. That's not an ideal place to declare this either. Whatever. So this is suma activity, suma view. Look, I'm gonna make this public. And then we're going to make suma activity initialize to this dot moves element zero. That way, this is the same everywhere. All right, now these are both in the same project, right? God, I hope so. Yeah, it's in the project. These are both inside the Playshogi website, GWT Maven. Okay. So. If I just rebuild like that, it all compiles. And if I rerun this, just wait for it to run. Okay, I was trying to click on this browser tab. Oh, let's see. You're not sure anymore. Should have been chess yeah we did chess recently like this week uh could have been go definitely could have been go it would have been months ago in that case which would make sense with the fact that you don't recall as opposed to like we just did chess monday tuesday yeah this week's been a blur problems so it's still defaults the all button to being selected because I forgot to deselect that. Oh, where's my sumo view? Problem options panel. No, I did deselect it. Okay, in that case, what the heck? Main page, force refresh, problems. Why? <laughs> Why? What have I done so wrong? How could this possibly be happening? Oh, hey, I figured out how this could possibly be happening. Ow. 
activating problem feedback panel. That's nice. Did you? Don't know why activating the all radio button was part of that. Evidently it was. Actually, this is where I want to stick my code change. Do we have a list of all the radio buttons anywhere? Nope. We don't. Uh, why would we keep anything useful? Like, that would be a global variable. I would object to it being global, but still. I... Um... So all button gets its own thing. Um, moves button. Oh, but now I have to keep a dimension of the array. Yuck. Whatever. Code will be slightly more intelligible by the time we're done with this, so. Um, let's stop that. Okay. Um, and the length of this needs to be the same as move style length. Um, There we go. That's cleaner. I like that slightly more. Um. Add click handler this. Yeah, I think that's fine. So hopefully this time things will work slightly better. Compile. All right, and run. Okay, let's see. You have to go find a mask and buy smokes. All right, thank you. I will take all the luck I can get. Also, you left like four minutes ago. Sorry, I'm bad. And you'll be probably disappointed that I'm gonna be wrapping up likely before you finish your trip. So, sorry, I need to get well, when I'm coding, I'm super distracted by said coding. Um, it, like, demands my full attention. Uh, shit. Okay, this aired somewhere. Cannot read property, etc. of undefined. 
So my brilliant idea of making the code more readable actually impaired our ability to have the code work at all. So let's go back a bit. Yeah, with Eclipse, I'm used to going forward and backward through code changes quite a bit. Uh, Oh, control Y can delete a line? Never knew that. Interesting. I have to change my shortcut keys. But yeah, we're gonna strip that line out and see whether um, this other way of writing the code might have produced the desired result with less headache. Launch. Problems. Nice. Now, I imagine some... No. I thought I saw this... Okay. Well, anyway, skip next. seems to give me a random thing of a certain difficulty. Okay, cool. And if I pick all... Okay, I've broken the all button. But you know what? I don't even care. All isn't a category as far as I'm concerned. Let's get rid of it. It's too much headache. I don't want it. Somebody wants to put it back and make it work. That's their problem. Um, no, I should take a closer look at this and see if I could get all working. Despite the massive headache it's been, uh, I don't know, it's not even worth it. directory. Well, that's a bit ambitious. Git commit file. All right, so we're going to commit yoyomi view, kifu editor panel, um, this, 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 sumo view. All right. Um, Branches next sumo category. And yeah, what we're attempting to fix. Preserve sumo category. Wait, did I just break, um, well, I have no way of testing if I broke it, because I don't have problems of difficulty f five moves. I could look at the code, 
try to discern. Um, yeah, whatever that is. Uh, preserved Summa category on skip next remove all. Uh, uh, preserve summa category default three and remove all. This definitely raises questions. So sorry about that, but um, <laughs> shit. Wait, wait, the way that I test this is I have to get five problems right and wait for this thing to freeze. Oh, this is terrible. We are in the worst possible testing situation because the tester sucks at solving Sume. <laughs> oh no. Uh, yeah, Bioyomi survival. So I have to solve like five of these in a row before it levels up. Hang on. No, custom mode could save me. But yeah, we're gonna do it the hard way. Fuck. All right, this is like the worst testing ever. Oh God. In some ways though, it's funny to test it this way because this is how actual people would use it. All right, we got one. Correct. You know, I could just put a message out in the Discord, ask, well, no, I couldn't. This is running in my local box. I don't have a way to deploy this. Ah, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> uh, maybe I have a way to deploy it, but man. What a way to test. I have a new found respect for what testers do. Jeez. Okay, that's a dragon. Um. I'm so confused by this token between my dragon and my horse. So very confused by that. We are attempting to test my website. You know, the bright side of this is I have only a thousand or so of these problems. So eventually I will learn some of them and maybe be able to test this. Uh, or I could customize the parameters, but that's no fun. Oh wow. Wow, that was an adventure. Yeah, here I am attempting to verify I haven't broken anything. Um, except I forgot I'm bad at solving these. So that could be a problem. 
Uh, idea is like I should be able to solve five of these and then everything should freeze as it tries to load the next difficulty. Uh... Is it this? No. Oh, that's interesting. I failed the same problem twice. Maybe I randomly drew the same problem twice. Huh. Could have been random. Strictly speaking, that could be random. Okay, well, I'm not going to get five of these correct in time for the timer. Let's pick custom mode. Raise difficulty every one. Play. All right. Um, so I just need to solve one. I'm so screwed. Yep, just need to solve one Suma, a mate in three, in five minutes to see if the difficulty level increases or not. Um, this is not looking good for the tester. <laughs> this is definitely not looking good for the tester. What the fuck? Who made this problem? Um, it's not even fair. All right, let's see. You need a second puzzle database. Just one easy puzzle. <laughs> yeah, I really do. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely helps. <laughs> I am the worst tester ever. This is horrible. Why am I streaming this? <laughs> it's funny. That's why we're doing it. But my god. Uh, like, I want to say this problem's bugged, that there's no solution. And then people will be like, no, you are so wrong. This is the answer. You're like, oh, yeah, you're right. I knew that. But seriously, like, what the heck? I have one gold in hand. They have this lance. Like, unless I can get this bishop to move away so I could drop the gold here. I don't have anything. I've got... Oh, that's not a pawn. That's a silver. That's why I'm confused. That's a silver. Well, there's a silver lining here, then. Hmm. So if I drop right on the king, okay, if bishop takes a gold drop here, mate, if well, uh, a lance takes, I don't have a mate. This is so terrible. Oh, maybe Rook there. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I solved one. Correct! And it goes on to the next difficulty. And yeah, so could not load, etc. Not saving stats for guest user. Fine. But I solved one. And meanwhile, if I go over here and I try to solve one, I can still solve one, right? Maybe. I mean, we are talking about me. 
that's still. Wait, why is a bishop here and not bishop anywhere else? Bishop here, king moves. Oh, right, I have to cut off this square. That's why I found this. Wrong! No, that's definitely right. Unless, like, I'm misreading what this is. Um. Yeah. How? Oh, this is a knight over here. Huh. Well, what do we do about the knight? Because that knight ruins my mate. I think I check king moves and the bishop moves. Yeah, there we go. I'm smart. All right, have a good night. Uh, next. Yeah, the next button works. It's a miracle. All right. I'm satisfied that this code patch that I spent way too long on and only tested once um, it's perfect. So we're going to submit that. Uh, this is problem number 21. So, actually, yeah, that's fine. Compare and pull request. There we go. Sorry for removing the all button. It was in my way. It, uh, it complicated. Uh, however, leaving it However, adding it makes this, uh, however, keeping it would make this code too complex for me to understand. And nobody freaking uses it, so. Yep, yep. Yep. Honestly, this code was too complex to begin with, so if somebody wants to make it more complex, they can find a solution, but I'm not interested, so good enough. Llama is analyzing games in St. Louis. Nice. Uh, too bad your games uh, against Stockfish 1 and 2 are bad. Yeah. That's too bad that your games are trash. Play better. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, oh, he's doing that right now. Cool. Yeah, that's way to go, Llama. I wish I had some hot garbage games like inside my. I bookmarked a few. Uh, that was a good game. Oh, I could send my game against Shogi Harbor. Um, not the worst idea ever. Huh. But yeah, she didn't ask for a roast. That'd be mean. How many hours before the bug report? All button gone. Honestly, I don't think that's going to be reported. I don't think anybody uses the all button. And if they do use it, I think it's entirely accidental. 
some one of these things that came about just because like hey there's room for it and i think it looks nice um honestly the layout of this could be fixed a bit too like you'd want three moves like we want these all vertically aligned or something i don't know how you want it to look but the way it looks like now could use some help yeah but um i think it was just they wanted to round out the feature set and this predated all this other cool stuff and once we had this like nobody goes back here and uses the all button it's just not done um but yeah, also, like, is there an open issue? Uh, yeah, there's something about puzzle difficulty. People are asking about rating the puzzles, but I think really what they need is just a way to have puzzles of various difficulties. Um, include num moves at this... what? I don't understand this. Confused. In the Suma place and URL. I'm guessing either that's already done or I don't know what he's talking about. Um, but okay. Yeah, well, I think we've made progress on as many issues as it makes sense for you to try to make progress on right now. Um, yeah, this is cool. Um, yeah, so I think at this point I'm going to wait for new issues because I'm not super excited. <laughs> Honestly, the one I'm most excited about is Dobotsu. Um, I am bad at Dobutsu. I would like to solve them. If you could give me those problems, I could maybe learn to play this. This is like the 3x4 board with the enormous pieces that like children love to chew on. So, uh, and they have like animal figures on them. I could learn some stuff about some Dobutsu. Um, but also, like, that's a lot of work, and I don't have the data, and nobody does, and I don't know if there's an engine that can generate the data. Eh, we'll figure it out sometime. Anywho, like, we've been going for a few hours. Um, hopefully, like, once the weekend comes till March, I'll have time to look at this. Because, yeah, people are increasingly using the site, so let's fix the quality of life issues. Especially if people are speed running or just running as many problems as they can. So, whatever things people are using the most are the things we'll try to fix. Um, but yeah, also, like, I added to this list an item for certificate store. So... I think this could be a way to promote Shogi Harbor in some small way. Um, yeah. Because it's cool that like they're awesome certificates for official 81 dojo stuff. That's great. This little side thing with the play Shogi, like, I'd be totally cool with getting a certificate from um, Sad Penguin and Emo Bear. Just telling me, like, good job, you are good at sume. I'd be totally cool with that. Like, I'm not picky. But I, I don't know how much I'd pay for it. But some people might be into that. There might be something there. And of course, yeah, getting a signature from uh, yeah, Our Lady's 1Q would be awesome. Um, anyway. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.